Oh, the tagging. I wonder why it was uncomfortable. Oh, I thought I broke my neck. <gasps> oh, don't beep your horn. That was rude. Oh, oh, God, no. Sorry. Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Today I have something really cool that I've been working on for a very long time and I think you're gonna like it. Basically, if you've seen some of my other videos, you probably heard me talking about how over this summer I got absolutely obsessed with the program Pretty Little Liars. So can keep secret if one of them is dead. Don't worry, there are absolutely no spoilers in this video. I don't think so. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's about these four girls and their best friend Alison goes missing. She knows absolutely everything about them. A year later after her disappearance, I start getting texts from her and she's saying stuff like, I'm going to reveal all your secrets. They're, they're bad secrets. Okay, they're bad. Okay. So the girls are like, oh poo. Anyway, hashtag plot twist. The police then find Alison's body and it turns out she's been dead for a year. So who is pretending to be her and who is threatening to reveal all their secrets. Anyway, these girls are getting blackmailed by this person who's pretending to be Alison, but it's not Alison because she's dead. Is she? Is she dead? And signs everything off, including text and letters and everything with the letter A. I absolutely love the series and I personally loved who A was. It would have been so cool if Maya was Red Coat. Or if, if Emily's mum was A, Pam Fields. That would have been sick. Anyway, Halloween is coming up and I thought, what what would be the best Halloween costume ever? One thing that I loved in this series was that A would have masks made of the girls and then commit crimes while wearing the masks. Very clever. Anyway, the masks were really creepy, especially the Alison mask and the Emily mask. They were freaky as. I thought it would be cool if I made an A mask for Halloween, except I wanted it to look exactly like me. The method I'm gonna show you is kind of complex and kind of difficult, but there is another easy way you can do it. All you have to do is put cling film on your face and then get someone else to paper mache with just bits of newspaper and PVA glue and water, and then put the paper mache on your face. Then paint it and you're done. But I wanted my mask to be exactly like the one from the show, kind of a hard plastic. When people ask me how much it's gonna cost, it's kind of hard to put an exact number on it because I already had black clothes and I already had paints and stuff. So it really depends on what you have got and what you haven't got. This is how you do it. Before you start, make sure you're wearing old clothes. If not, just put a bin bag with a hole in the top just because you want to look extra fashionable. What we're gonna be doing is putting a seaweed based product called Alginate onto your face and then filling it with plaster Paris. But before you start, you have to cover the hair on your head. Cover the hair by either having a shower cap, a swimming cap. I didn't have either, so I literally just cling filmed my head up. Yeah, I know. Really embarrassing and I can't believe I'm showing you this. Also, the hairs that are on your face, such as eyelashes, eyebrows, and sometimes these bits, I literally just put Vaseline on them, the normal Vaseline that you put on your lips. Eyebrows are bleak. This stops it sticking to the alginate and pulling them out. What you want to do when mixing the alginate is to follow the alginate of your brand's instructions. My alginate was from Hobbycraft and it cost about £16. And to be fair, that was the most expensive part of the process, which was two cups of alginate to one cup of water. I used about three quarters of the bag and I had some left over if I needed to fix up any holes. When mixing the alginate, you only have one minute to mix it because it takes four minutes to set. Ours was really lumpy. Do not worry if it looks lumpy, it still comes out smooth underneath. One thing that's so important to establish between you and your helper before you even start is a code, because obviously you're not gonna be able to speak if you have alginate over your mouth. So me and Tom had like a little hand signal that was like basically said, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Get this off my face right now. Get it off now, please. <sighs> Tom started by putting the alginate on the top of my head and letting it just droop down. You wanna leave the nose until last. And even when you do the nose, you've got to be really, really careful to not block up the nostrils, otherwise you will die. It's really important to have a Q-tip or an earbud on hand just so you can unclog the nostrils if you really do need to. Make sure the alginate comes right under your chin and right up to your cheekbones. At about the 
fourth minute, this stuff starts to go really like kind of tacky and sticky. Now, this is when your helper wants to tear up some cotton wool balls and stick them to main features like the cheekbones, nose, chin, and forehead. Four. That bit. Stop it. Lots of Paris. Oh, tap it. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, the list. Mm. Next, mm -hmm. next step. Next mm. step. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Come on, go. Mm. Mm. Now. Whilst the alginate is drying, get your friend to cut up some mod rock strips. I used about one and a half mod rock rolls. They were only one pound in Hobbycraft. I want to put one here. Here. But on these ones, you're going to want to fold them in half again. That's because you want the ones on the outside to be absolutely rock hard, otherwise the plaster of Paris isn't just going to pour out. It normally takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Give it a tap and make sure it's rock hard. What you want to do is, is then lean forward and sort of wiggle your face like this. You want to get a sucker off your face. Ah! I've been born! Oh my god, it's so bright. Once you've pulled that off, you are ready to plaster of Paris. Before you put the plaster of Paris in, you need to block up the nostrils with some clay. This is just so the plaster of Paris doesn't, you know, completely drain out of the nostrils. Anyway, you just want to mix that together and make sure that there are no lumps at all. I don't recommend that you pour in the plaster of Paris because that can make air bubbles. It's what you want to do is you want to literally scoop it into your mould and brush it in. The plaster of Paris takes about 50 minutes to an hour to dry and also it gets kind of warm. I wasn't expecting that. It does get really warm. It can be kind of hard to get the plaster of Paris out of the mould. So what I recommend you do is buy some lubricant or Vaseline. The lubricant was about £2.50 from Hobbycraft so again it's not too expensive. <laughs> But do not worry if you do have air bubbles, it's not a problem. Simply fill them in with clay. The next step is to use the plaster of Paris mold to make a liquid latex mold. Liquid latex. What you want to do with the liquid latex is literally just paint brush it on and now wait for that to dry. You can tell when it's dry because it will no longer be white, it will have gone a clear colour. Then you want to do another layer, wait for it to dry again. Another layer, wait for it to dry. I think you get the picture. You want to do about 20 layers, which is about half the bottle. On your last layer of liquid latex, like we did with the Mod Rock, break up some cotton wool and put it on the main features. What you then want to do is peel off the main cotton wool bit and just leave the stringy fibres. Gonna put more Mod Rock on top just to get an extra hard shell. I know it seems like a lot, but you have to do this. Now you just want to get the more Mod Rock rolls and just basically repeat what you did last time. Covering the whole thing, make sure it's nice and rock hard. I left mine to dry overnight. Getting the plaster of Paris out of the liquid latex is kind of tricky. Mum, what would you do if I was just like, sick on you? Slap me? A bit harsh. If I was you, I'd clean the sick off first. You want to slightly peel away the corners and just brush in some of the lubricant or Vaseline. Is it bad that I still can't undo child life? Mum? Can you undo this child lock? Just be extra careful as it is really fragile. There we go. Yeah babe, love it. You are now done with the plaster of Paris bit, so put that to the side and put it in the bin. No, don't put it in the bin actually, don't put it in the bin, it's kind of cool you want to keep it. Don't worry, we're nearly there. The next step sounds really daunting, but trust me, it's actually not that bad. The internet and the tutorials on YouTube make it sound really complex, but it's really not that difficult. Five for class. My only word of warning is that it really smells. You want to get something to cover your mouth. Gunnich. 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 You also want to make sure that you're in a really ventilated room when you do it. I used a fiberglass starter kit from Amazon. I think it was about $8.99. You want to start to cut up that fiberglass sheet into all sizes. You'll want a big one for the forehead, a couple of small ones, and really small ones for the nose and nostrils, as you do not want air bubbles. Hey guys, this is Johnny the editor. I'm all snugly in bed. Putting this in because I forgot to say in the video that it's really important to either put lubricant or Vaseline on the inside of your liquid latex mold before you fiberglass. Otherwise, 
the fiberglass gets stuck and you won't be able to get it out easy. The next thing to do is to start mixing up the fiberglass resin. The instruction said that it's a 10 milliliter of resin, you do one pea sized drop of hard nut. You then want to mix it all up until it's completely blended together and no bits are floating about. What's after that? I can't remember what comes after that. Put some of the fibres that you've cut up into the inside of the mould and using that resin that you've mixed up and the brush that's supplied, brush it right in and making sure that it's thoroughly wet. You want to keep on doing this until you cover the whole mask. Bird of warning, this stuff gets really hot. I don't know why, it's some sort of chemical reaction and I touched it and I nearly died. This stuff dries really quickly. After 20 minutes, it was completely solid plastic. And another word of warning, wear gloves because I didn't, and this stuff gives you splinters. I still have them in my hands. I can feel one here. What you wanna do is you wanna cut off those sharp edges. As you can see on my one, my fiberglass did have some air bubbles because I didn't use small enough strips, but it's really not a problem. Just fill it in with more clay and it's fine. So now we're pretty much done. From here onwards, it's literally just cutting out some nose holes, cutting out some eyes holes, two little holes here and here so you can attach some elastic. You can also use like the women's, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this. There's no nice way to say this, tip tape. You can literally just put it on the inside of the mask and it should stick to your forehead. You really want to make sure that everything is filed down and smooth. Get it really smooth on top. I recommend that you use this stuff called, I think it's called wire wool. Because the last thing you want is fiberglass splinter in your face. Oh my god, kill. The next thing you've got to do is just paint it. I used normal acrylic paints and I tried to match my own skin colour as best as I could. For the first layer I literally just brushed it all on with a paintbrush but then when I wanted to get all Kylie Jenner kind of contours I used a cheap little um, makeup sponge from the girls section in Primark. Once the paint is dry you want to add some varnish. All I need to do now is varnish it so it's shiny like the other mask. And then once you've had your varnish you are practically done. All you've got to do is literally just get your outfit. I ordered a hoodie off of eBay. And I'll put the link in the description. It's a really good hoodie and I've got the extra large. Obviously you don't have to do this next step, but I wanted people at the party to know exactly who I was. Using some fabric paint, which I bought from Hobby Craft, they were nice and cheap. I literally just measured out what I wanted to say and I measured out the A using a marker pen and then I just painted it on with these fabric paints. For my costume I am wearing black military boots, black skinny jeans or joggers, my A hoodie and that mask. I'm also going to be wearing a contact lens in one eye. So here it is, here is the final and finished real thing. I think the varnish just tops it off and it looks so good, I love it. Follow my Instagram and I will show you how it looked on the night. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to see what you guys go to Halloween as, so please tag me in your pictures on Instagram, Twitter, anything. Let me know if you do try out this tutorial. Please like, comment, subscribe for more videos. Let me know what else you would like to see on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I literally love you guys so much. Have the most amazing Halloween ever, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Chewing gum. Joking, I do want you really. I'll save you for later, yeah?